we're not dealing with post-COVID at this point with new variations, but the conversation, at least in the US, is uh, what will higher education look like post-COVID? There are some who would say it will never be the same, and there are others who say all we need to do is return to normal. I'd like to say that this is the moment to consider disrupting the system. Remus, you started with the beginning of the incredible scale of need. And I would like to take the somewhat unconventional view that traditional higher education will not meet that need. We need to accept that and to say that place-based education is an, an essential foundation for the new systems of the future, but it cannot be the only answer. And we have to look at what is already disrupting the system and see if we can build on that to build a global system. So I'd like to raise what I think are some of the elements that are occurring both within and as disruptive and outside the current system in the time that I have. Uh, first, let me talk about scale. We cannot reach that 100 million uh, with the current place-based system. Uh, you cannot build as many residential campuses or place-based campuses to serve that need. So obviously technology will be the need. But what I have seen in addressing hundreds of institutions as a quality assurance accreditor is that it is not just taking a traditional model and putting it online. It is reconstructing the whole system from the ground up. There are models of that in the US, Southern New Hampshire University, American Public University, one nonprofit, one for-profit, Western Governors University, but all three of them have been redesigned or designed from the inside out to deliver at scale a level of quality. The second thing, so scale is really going to be important and it is not just taking technology and extending it. In fact, the data has shown that after COVID hit, students did not feel that faculty made that transition to online effectively as effectively as needed. And so uh, I would say that we need to rethink how to deliver quality at scale using technology. A second thing we need to see is that employability skills. This was raised in the previous section uh, by many of the students, but it's not just employability skills. These are lifelong and life-wide skills of communication, collaboration, workforce diversity. These skills are absent from curricula. And I've spent the last five years with a nonprofit uh, called the Quality Assurance Commons, trying to embed these into curricula. But we need to demonstrate to students that their education is going to lead to meaningful work. A third issue uh, is integrating with employers. Uh, you look at in the US Google and globally, Google certificates now, they say they will hire somebody at a six figure salary who completes their certificate program. We cannot achieve scale without integration and applications of uh, serving the needs of industry and business. COVID has decimated women in the workforce, we, in the US at least. We need to see ways to reach out to new populations. Another, and speaking of new populations, uh, there are adult learners the system is not reaching people who have never traditionally attended higher education. We call them first generation students, but there are 37 million in the US adult learners with a sum to no college credit. And we need to find a way to bring them into the system, but it will not be through place-based education. We need to find credentials of acknowledging what they already know on a learning counts whatever you gain, systems of prior learning assessment, systems of recognizing talents and skills, and developing those with new models of credentialing. 
Uh, and there are models of that that are available. We also need to uh, see about stackable relating different, we're seeing micro-credentials as a major way into the future of uh, bringing people into the system that have historically been excluded. Leading to that, I would say that we need to look at new providers. Uh, there are tremendous new providers, and as a former regulator, one of the biggest barriers to new provision is regulation, uh, either governmental or accreditation. And I am uh, currently working with a 28-year-old entrepreneur who has great ideas, and I, the biggest barrier to the implementation of those ideas is accreditation, the regulation. We need new models. Uh, at, when I was president of one of the regional accrediting commissions, we created an incubator model where new programs or new institutions could get started more quickly and be accredited more quickly. Uh, it has not been replicated elsewhere. I think it needs to be. But it is to say we need to innovate in a regulatory framework that allows for innovation. Tied to that, uh, and I will say, for example, Masterclass, Outlier, there are a number of new institutions. University of the People has grown to 100,000 students. Um, but they had to operate, and all of them operate initially without accreditation. And they had to say, could they be recognized? Could their credit be recognized? What are the alternative strategies for recognizing the credentials and the credits of these uh, enterprises? I think, uh, therefore, we need to really look at how do we support entrepreneurship? And that is also going to look at venture capital, market capital, innovations. How do we scale? Uh, and there are... Uh, entrepreneurial for-profit enterprises to you and others that are doing that, some of which are, have practices that are questionable, and we're going to have to find ways to assure quality. I also want to then talk about equity and access, because we cannot think that just scale alone answers the question of who are we admitting, who is completing, and what kind of jobs do they get? The data is very clear that there are far many more high promise students than are admitted into our colleges and universities, particularly the high reputation elite universities. So we need systems that don't focus on research as much as they focus on delivering high quality education and excellence needs or the definition of excellence and quality needs to be redefined in terms of who are you serving, how well do you serve them, and what are the consequences of that delivery, not just the quality of research and how many faculty have doctoral degrees and what their citation record is. The research and the, the data in the US is overwhelming that First generation and underrepresented students, African American and the like, are uh, do not receive the good jobs, the good salaries, and so they are ending up with maybe with credentials. They don't complete at the same rate, but they are not ending up with the same jobs. And institutions need to take responsibility to develop the career support and advice. The thing that I would say there are new models that we need to look to. I mentioned the University of the People, which, one minute, that's great. Uh, the University of the People, look at Southern New Hampshire has uh, campuses for refugees. Technomelio University in Mexico teaches positive psychology and thinking about wholeness and wellness. African Leadership University talks about not majors, but mission. Each student should have a mission and the or curriculum should be organized. Upward Bound in the US just received accreditation, took five, four to five years, too long, but just received accreditation that is community-based, work-based, and really brings in a whole new constituency. 
The point of all of this is to say that we need to think about what will be the ways of breaking, of looking outside the system and bringing change in to deliver the scale that we need. There are models of disruption that we can build on. And I believe that partnerships with new enterprises with in business and industry and with changing the regulatory environment to allow for more innovation can have the impact that we'd like to see. Thank you so much.